beautiful day that you got that blue stuff. Beautiful day that the Lord hath made. Amen. We will rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, uh, we got to do some praying. This is prayer meeting night, by the way. So we want to pray a little bit. We got some folks that just went to the hospital today. Uh, uh, Pam's hus husband, Rick Dawson, he's in the hospital. We don't know exactly what's the matter. Do you know, Cheryl? I don't. Huh? They run a test. Me and Jeanette was up there. They was fixing to run a bunch of tests, so we left. And uh, so we hope there's going to be a good report there, and they find out what's wrong with him because he's in the hospital. He was hurting to go to the hospital, so they took him uh, in the emergency room. And Paul and Ronnie came to church a while ago, and I think their daughter-in-law has got an acute appendicitis or something. They're fixing to work on her. Mm -hmm. And Paul and Ronnie had to leave, and also Paul and Ronnie's got their grandbaby that's in the hospital. Little one like that little fellow right there and uh, having some pretty tough issues. And so uh, there's three things I know we've got to pray for right there. Anybody else why we, uh, uh, anybody else got some uh, you want prayer for? I, I know uh, uh, I want to pray for uh, my wife's sister and mother. And I want to pray for my mother. Anybody else? Anybody else got some stuff going on? We need prayer. Jeanette. We'll pray God to get it right out. How about back here? Anybody got Jenny? Uh, yeah, uh, my son-in-law, he's got um, uh, melanoma, cancer, lots of spots yeah. and stuff. Yeah, skin cancer. Yeah, and some on his face. So yeah, they got to take off. Yeah, pray he'll take that off. Your son-in-law? Okay. Anybody else? Melissa? Um, I'm having a hysterectomy on November the 6th, so remember me. When now? November 6th. Yes. Remember her having an operation November 6th? Yes, and they had the surgery in February. Sure. Surgery? Mm, this is prayer night. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard. Yes. Yeah. Have to go through that. Uh, well, I, I just had a mini stroke on Saturday, and I went to the doctor yesterday, and um, they're putting me on uh, some medicines to keep me from having a massive stroke because my they're afraid I'm going to have an inner blood clot, but the massive one's coming. So if y'all could just pray for me that that doesn't happen. Um, I've got that going on and weighing on my mind. Amen. So. Yes. Guys, you know, uh, uh, this is prayer meeting night. I'm going to pick on a couple. I want Brother Charles to help me pray. Amen. Sister Jeanette's going to give the word uh, tonight, and we're excited about that. But, man, there's a lot of stuff here. and I'm going to tell you, I can't remember all of it, but we're going to certainly try uh, uh, to lift uh, each one, uh, each spoken request up to the Lord. I'm going to pray a little bit. Charles is going to pray a little bit because this is prayer meeting night. Amen. And uh, Amen. we got to have prayer. we got to call out to the Father because... Uh, we can't do it, but God can. Amen. God can. And uh, me and Sister Jeanette was in the hospital this afternoon, and we was both had the same thought that I, I, I wish God would just anoint us so we could have touched those other people in there, and they'd have got healed and left and went home. I mean, the whole uh, 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 hospital was uh, full of people in the emergency room, and, you know, uh, if Jesus was here, he'd walk up there and cleaned it out, you know. And I'm just going to be honest with you, they'd go out of business. And so we're here as children, and we're supposed to do greater works, so we're going to claim greater works. Amen? Yes. Uh, uh, greater works because he has paid the ultimate sacrifice for us that we can receive the promises that he give us here. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and he said in his word, Cheryl, by his stripes we are healed. That's a promise from our almighty God, yes. and we've got to be like that centurion. You know, he done spoke the word, and we got to believe it. Amen? Amen. We got to believe it and we got to put our faith together and believe we're going to do a corporate prayer in here. We're going to pray. Man, there's so many needs in here and uh, uh, families and things going on. We want God to touch and meet needs. Amen. Uh, uh, we just want to pray and cry out to him. Let's, let's go to him in prayer. You be praying about your need that you just 
uh, asked about, you pray about it because I can't remember my own, Charles can't either. And, uh, but you spoke it, and uh, it's a petition to the Lord thy God, and we're going to ask uh, Jesus, uh, Lord, to uh, intercede for us. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you and we praise you tonight. We worship you. We magnify and glorify you, God. Lord, we come in this house to just love you tonight and praise you, God. Lord, you paid the ultimate sacrifice for each and every one of us, God, that has uh, you in our heart. We in your kingdom tonight, God. We love you so much and we praise you, God. And Lord, that uh, your people, uh, uh, your children, God, has many needs in this house tonight, God, and they many needs on that internet tonight, God, uh, out even uh, places, even all over the world, God. They sickness, God, they sickness in sin, they sickness in the body, God, And but you are God that uh, uh, can never fail us, God. You said by your stripes we're healed. You promised that, God, when you died on that cross and took those 39 stripes, God, you promised us healing, God, and we claim it tonight, God. Lord, we love you so much, and we claim it the way the centurion did. Speak the word, God. You've already spoken the word, and we claim it, God. We're receiving it tonight, God. Lord, there's so many needs. I pray for Marquita's mother. I lift her up to you, God, in Jesus' name, God, that you touch her body. I, I lift Donna up to you. Had the mini stroke, God. I lift her up, pray. You touch uh, her body and totally heal her, God, in the name of Jesus. And we're going to give you the glory right now, God. I pray for Melissa, God, that you'll get a good report, God, and come out of this thing, God, the uh, uh, in, in a great way, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you for our doctors. Thank you for the medicines we have. But thank you for Jesus, God. Uh, we love him and we praise you and we worship you, God. We pray for that person Jeanette talked about, uh, this having problems with her mother coming in and bringing all them demon and idol worshipers. We command them to go and be thrown in the trash can and burn, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. We pray for Ronnie and Paula right now. they gone up there to her uh, uh uh, uh, daughter-in-law that she's being uh, operated on right now with appendicitis, God. I pray, God, everything will go well and get her out of that and let her have a speeding recovery, God. And God, through all this, I pray she'll get on fire for the Lord, God, in Jesus' name. I pray for that little grandbaby of Paula's uh, uh, and Ronnie's right now, God. I pray you heal that baby. I pray, God, for supernatural miracle to heal that baby totally, God. Touch his mind, touch his body. In the name of Jesus, touch those muscles in its body and heal that baby, God. In Jesus' name, but two of those muscles, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for uh, Brother Rick Dawson right now. God, uh, Lord, uh, they're running tests to see uh, what kind of pain he's got in his left side. I pray, God, <coughs> they're going to find out what the problem is. Uh, and, uh, Lord, they'll, uh, he'll get a good report and come out of that hospital, God, in Jesus' name, Lord. And, Lord, uh, Sister Cheryl's going to be operated here coming up. I pray it'll be a successful thing, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you and we praise you, God. We worship you, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we lift you up uh, 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 tonight, God, because you are king. You are our, our healer. You are our deliverer, and we claim it tonight, God, uh, in the name of Jesus, God. Uh, Lord, I know my sister, she preaches word tonight. Lord, touch all of these needs, at, uh, all of these questions. Uh, uh, sister Susie, Lord. Her daddy, Lord, I pray, God, you just take him on. Don't let him suffer in any way, God, in the name of Jesus. Don't let him suffer, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray for uh, Jenny's uh, uh, son-in-law right now, God. I lift him up to you, that melanoma. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that they'll get it all cleaned out, God, in Jesus' name. I pray for Lisa right now and, and Mimo, and my mother, Lord. I lift her up to you, God. I pray for my sister Cheryl, Lord. We love her and we lift her up to you. She's healed in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Lord, we pray for those folks out there that is sin sick, God, that you heal them tonight, God. Tonight they will be healed, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We love you and we praise you and we worship you tonight, God. We honor you tonight, God. We praise you, Lord. We praise your holy name, Lord. And God, we just magnify you and glorify your name and lift you up because you're worthy, Lord. And God, all these requests that have been mentioned, Lord, that's in our hearts. They've been mentioned because we know that you can do everything we need, Lord, for our bodies when they're sick. You can help us in our finances. You just are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, O oh God, and we magnify you. We know that, Lord Jesus, you purchased us on Calvary's cross, Lord. God, you paid the price for our healing, Lord God, and our afflictions, Lord. And, God, we know you can intervene, and I ask you to intervene. Lord, I ask you to touch Robert. Touch his sore body tonight, God. I pray, God, that you touch Susie and heal her body, Lord Jesus. You're so awesome, Lord, and we praise you. You are the great physician, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, by your stripes we are healed. We thank you for that. 
And God, we just ask you to touch people tonight, Lord. You'll set the captives free, Lord. God, you'd mend broken hearts, Lord. You f would forever change people's lives, God. Because you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. You're able to do so much more than we can think or comprehend, God. And we bless your name tonight. Have your way, Lord, in this service, God. Touch each singer, Lord, that would just be a sweet melody to your ears, oh God. And we pray as you bless Jeanette as she brings the word, God, that the power and the anointing will go forth, Lord God. And we give you praise and glory tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We receive it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There is coming a day when no heart shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears.
There'll be no sorrow. There'll be no pain. There'll be no tears. Hallelujah. Praise God. With the Spirit of the Lord moves in my heart I will dance like David dance. the spirit of the Lord moves in my heart I will dance like David dance. the spirit of the Lord in my heart I will dance like David dance and I will dance
Pray for my daughter right now. She's in bad need of prayer. Lord, I pray for my daughter Becky right now. I lift her up to you. God, I pray you touch her heart. Give her strength. Give her courage. God, Lord, let her go forth in what she's got to do. God, in the name of Jesus. And we'll give you the praise right now in the name of Jesus, God. We'll give you the praise right now, God, in Jesus' name. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand, I am tired, I am weak. Through the storm, through the night, oh, leave me home to thy light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and leave me on. Lord, you're the one that I leave my life for. You're my strength, you're my hope, you're my song. You pick me up, you make me strong. With my way, my soul, praise Strong with my way, with so long, precious Lord. Take my hand and lead me on, precious Lord. You're the one.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But, Lord, I couldn't do it without you holding my hand. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you'll hold my hand. Hallelujah. I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I would be what I wanted to be. I thought I could be on life's sinking sand, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I just do. Jesus, my own. From now on, when I'm in trouble, on Him I'll call. If I don't trust Him, I'll be less than a man. Cause I can't. you we magnify you God we lift you up tonight oh God thank you for loving us God God we can't even walk without you holding our hand hold our hand God as we travel this road God in the name of Jesus God oh hold our hand Lord we cry out to you tonight oh God we worship you and we praise you tonight oh God we honor you we magnify you tonight oh God thank you Lord Jesus thank you for loving us God hallelujah
Yeah, you've been walking through the valley, said the Lord. But yeah, you have not been walking alone, for I have held you by the hand the whole time, saith God. Yea, I say unto thee, do not worry, do not fret, for I am with thee, and you will go through this valley. You will not stay there, saith God. For yea, I love thee, my child, and yea, I want to help thee, and I want to comfort thee, and I want to give you strength and give you peace. Yea, I say unto thee, just reach out unto me and keep a hold of my hand, for I am God and you, I am leading you. And yea, you will get through this, saith God, for I am with you, and I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you, saith God. For I love thee with a love that thou cannot comprehend, saith the Lord. It is infinite. My love for you is infinite. You cannot comprehend it. For yea, I say unto thee, just hold on. Hold on, and you shall see the victory ahead of you, saith God, and you shall walk in that victory, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me, give me some ushers, please. Brother Charles. Lord, I can't even know that you hold. How is everybody tonight? You ready to hear the word of God? Amen. The Lord gave me this message a few days ago. And uh, if you'll turn in your Bibles, please, with me to 2 Kings uh, chapter 4. Actually, we're continuing a little bit with Elisha. Following him on his ventures for God. going to be a good many verses here so if you just follow along with me we'll we'll get these together but it's important not to leave any of these out uh, you'll see what I mean as we go along starting with verse 8 and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem where was a great woman and she was con she constrained him to eat bread and so it was that as off as he passed by he turned in thither to eat bread and she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man. It took her a, a little while to uh, kind of study this man and, and, uh, and get a good, um, I guess, a discernment on him and who he was and, and what he was. And, and so she, she said, and so she let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us 
that he shall turn in thither. So I believe with all my heart that God makes our connections. There was a purpose for uh, Elisha to be there at just this time. She was a very kind woman, and where it says that she was a great woman, actually she was rich and influential, but she was also great in every sense of the word. She was a, a godly woman. And she recognized that he had the Spirit of God upon him. It took her a little while to just kind of figure him out, and, and, and so she, she realized that this was a divine connection in her life. So, <laughs> my Bible's blowing here. And so it fell on the day that, I went back to verse 11, that he came thither and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, say now unto her, behold, thou hast been careful for us, or you have shown care for us. With all this care, what is to be done for thee? Now, I want you to pay attention to this um, uh, next line here because we're going to come back here later, and you'll understand what I'm talking about when we get there. He says, Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to be the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. Now, she in, in the area that she was living in, her kindred, her kin people, uh, the people of her family all lived together kind of like in a commune type thing situation where they were all together. And she knew that if she had a need of any kind, she could call on one of her kin to help her. So she said, I don't, I don't have any need of anything. There's nothing that I need. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood at the door, and he said, About this season, according to the time, this time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elisha had said unto her according to the time of life, and when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out to his unto his father to the reapers. Now this was a time of seed time and harvest. Uh, actually, they were harvesting, I believe, at this point. And so he went out to watch his dad and watch the men that were working uh, harvesting the crops. And he said unto his father, "My head, my head." And he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called to her husband. Now, I want you to understand that in this day and time, when they made a room on the wall, that was actually steps going up the side of the building of their home and up at the top of there on the roof was a room that she made for the man of God. So she took, she said now, he, and his anointing was there. He would sleep there. When he would pass through, he would eat with them. And she knew that that's where she heard, that's where her connection was. She needed to connect with the miracles of this man of God. So, she placed him, had him placed upon his bed and shut the door upon him and went out. And if you'll notice here, she didn't even take time to grieve. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men, one of the asses, that I might run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. She never started crying. She never uh, wept over the loss of her son at that time because she had a mission in, in mind. She was going to hold on to her promise. 
And this was the promise that the man of God had given her, and she wanted to keep that promise, and she didn't want to lose it. I want to ask you tonight, is your promise dead? The promise that God has given you, there are probably about 6,000, I think, promises in the Word of God. And, you know, we, we've got some that we're standing on. All of us have. There, if you if you know what they are, then you know what they that they belong to you, and they are promises. Now they are not maybe, you know maybe so, they are promises from God to you, and you can claim those for yourself and for your family, your family members. He was telling her, you know, <laughs> this is not even Sunday. It's not time to go to to Sunday school or school of the Bible or. Our prayer meeting. It's not time to, to go to worship service. What are you doing calling for transportation? And then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward, slack not riding for me except I bid thee. Don't even slow down for me. It, unless I tell you, you know, I just can't go any farther. We have to stop a minute. She said, Just keep going. Don't stop. She had a mission. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel, and it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And what did she answer? By faith, she answered what? It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within, her soul is bitter within, and the Lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me. Now the prophets don't always know everything. You know, there's times when, when God does hide things from the prophets. But there's a scripture that says that he will not do anything unless he lets his prophets know. So it, there was a reason that he didn't know what was going on in her life at this time or what was troubling her. It was the plan and purpose of God. Then she said, did I desire a son, my Lord? Did I say, do not deceive me? She was reminding him of his promise to her that she didn't even ask for in the first place. Then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again and lay my staff upon the face of the child. Now he's going to send his, his servant to do what she knew that only he could do. You know, a lot of times we depend on people. And, and God is saying, depend on me. Put your trust in me. Claim my promises. Walk in my word. Live for me daily. And understand that I am the one that is leading you. I'm the one that's holding your hand. And leading you through everything that you're going through in your life. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. And I understand when a person passes away, the hearing is the last thing to go. We've been told that, and we've gone many times into intensive care, and people were passing, and they would say, talk to them, make sure that you get, say something to them, encourage them, and not only that, make sure, even if they just have to do nothing but blink their eyes, make sure that they're ready to meet the Lord. Because you can, and they can understand, they can hear. Um, okay, where are we? Then the child, the child is not awaked. And Gehazi passed on before them, verse 31, let's go back there again, and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awaked. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead. Now we know the child was dead because the Bible says the child was dead. He had no breath in him and laid upon his bed. 
He went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. He went in by himself. You know, there's a lot of things we can receive from God, but the things that I've, places I've received the most is when I'm by myself with the Lord. I can, I can be refreshed, I can be renewed in my spirit, and, and I, can, I can feel the unction of the Lord coming upon me and rising upon me when I am in my private time with the Lord. And don't miss that because, listen, I've got a little scripture here the Lord gave me the other day, and it's in, you don't have to go there, Isaiah 54, 5, I'm going to read it to you. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And he went up, 34, and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. It began to become warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took upon her son and took up her, on her son and went out. I want to tell you tonight. We, not one time do we hear this woman questioning the will of God. She knew what the will of God was, and that's why she got on that donkey and took off to the man of God. We can go to God through any situation that we're going through, but there are times when there are drastic situations. There's trials, and, and there's troubles, and there's pain. But, you know, tonight, I'll, I'll tell you this, I have been having a little trouble in my knee. I don't know if some of you saw me uh, uh, probably limp a little bit Sunday. Well, I had had a little problem with my knee. But I reminded the Lord of his promise that by his stripes I'm healed. I, I, what I reminded him of was is that, that I can't do what he's called me to do limping. I want to walk up on my feet right, upright and, and, and walk and walk strong and steady with my eyes set toward him and toward his will for my life. And for the life of this church, I have a desire to see this church to go forward. I know we're not going backward. I know we're going forward. We can get on our donkey and we can ride toward God and we can get that answer and get our promise back. Some of you tonight have had promises you've been standing on and even walking on the Word of God. Some of you probably just did so much as to put the Bible down and stand on that Word of God. And I want you to know tonight that your promise is not dead. It's going to be resurrected. All you have to do is to reach out to God and desire to see that thing resurrected and bring it back to his remembrance what he has promised you in his word. So tonight I want you to be charged with this. I want the anointing to come upon you to receive from God tonight and receive everything that you need. Hold on to your promise. I want to I read you a little bit farther. I didn't know if I was going to get that far or not. But I want you to take you to um, 2 Kings 8. Now, you, you remember the verse I, talked, I told you about a while ago when he said, do you want me to speak to the king for you? Well, she didn't have a need for that then. But let's look in uh, chapter uh, 8, verse 4 through 6. 2 Kings, excuse me. And the king taught, are you there? And the king taught with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha had done. Now, uh, somehow or another, uh, Gehazi had, was in the presence of the king. Now, it doesn't say how he got there. It just says that, that he was there. And the, and the Bible tells us that he said, Start, Tell me some of the stories about Elisha. I have heard about Elisha. I've heard about all of the, the miracles that happened in his life. And now I want to know uh, a story. Just tell me one of the stories. I'd like to hear it. So it says, And it came to pass, as he was telling the king, how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son 
he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. Now there became, there became a famine in the land, and uh, Elisha went to the woman, and he said, You're going to have to move out of your home. You're going to go to another place to live for a while till the famine is over. So the famine is over, and she's back again, and now somebody else is in her, on her land. Somebody else is in her house, and, and she needs her property back. She needs a place for her and her son. That doesn't mention her husband this time. He was very old, so I assume, you know, it's just an assumption on my part that he had already passed. So he says, and when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. So he said before in the other verses, Do you want me to speak to the king for you? Well, she didn't have a need for it then. But now she has this need, and so God caused her to be at the right place at just the right time, and her prayer was, Oh, my, oh Lord, my, oh, my Lord, oh King, this is, this is the woman. She, she asked, oh, wait a minute. She cried unto the king for her house and for her land. So she was calling out to, her, to the Lord, the king, and in that, in that place that was just a, a matter of uh, respect, calling him uh, Lord. This was, this was her need. This was going to be fulfilled. And God had supernaturally placed her at this place at this time to receive her promise. Now I want you to turn with me and to kind of top this off tonight to Hebrews 11, if you will. We're going to look at uh, verse, I think we'll start with verse 33. I think we'll start with verse 32. And what shall I say more? And, of course, we know that this is the hall of faith uh, that we're talking about. This, this, this book in the Bible, this uh, uh, chapter, the 11th chapter, was a great hall of faith. Many of us call it that. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and Japheth, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. And, of course, Daniel's included in that and, and other prophets that we know about that we read, uh, read about in the Scriptures in the Old Testament. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. And, and this is... This is what I want you to understand. By faith, she got on that donkey and she read, she, she, I'm sorry, and she took off, actually she couldn't run, so she took off on that donkey and went to forget her promise. And when the scripture comes back and says in the New Testament, there was those through faith that obtained their promises. How, how is your faith tonight to receive your promise that God has promised you? Are, you? are you ready to call out to God? And are you ready to put your faith to work and receive the promise that you know that God has already given you and that has been weak in your heart and that you practically lay, it, lay down and die in front of you? Are you ready to see that promise resurrected tonight? If you are, I want you to come up here to the altar, please. I want to say to the audience on the Internet tonight that we are blessed to have you, and we thank you for viewing, and I just want you to know that God loves you, and so do we, and that there are promises that you've been reaching out for that you're trying to, to obtain through other means except by faith in God. And I just challenge you tonight to reach out and grab your promise. And God bless you.